I'll stand here alone With my head in my hands I've been gone so long I can't remember where I've been How do you cope? What helps you? Humor. Humor does everything. Humor takes a stressful situation, it lightens the stress off a little bit. And anything that possibly make me mad, I'll make a joke about it so I don't get as mad. And then of course, my dog, which I wrote about in my book, is so obedient and is the best dog in the world and does tricks and she constantly tries to make me happy. and finding stuff that I like to do, like riding four-wheelers, training my dog, and humor, and of course working out, helping others. It's all a good coping strategy for me. Have you ever exploded in anger at anybody? Yes, I do that quite a bit. It's more like crying over spilt milk, where one little thing that happens, it's like instant explosion because I don't agree with it. I'm like really high on morals, ethics, and values and integrity and if I see anything that being manipulated or they know that they're doing wrong I'm instantly drill instructor style up in their face or not in their face technically but I'm getting mean and angry and aggressive with them do you have an insomnia or any kind of sleep issues uh, I have not if I, if I wake up from a nightmare which with my traumatic brain injury, I can't really remember the dream, but I'll wake up feeling like my heart's about to explode because it's beating so hard and fast, and then it uh, keep me up the rest of the day, rest of the night. But falling asleep, I, it can be a problem sometimes, but then once I'm asleep, it's like I'm in a coma again. I sleep solid, and I don't remember. Nothing can wake me up and, except a nightmare or something, and I feel like I sleep pretty good every night, minus every once in a while a nightmare or something. Do you have any flashbacks, and does uh, is it the same dream or the same incident? Well, the dreams with my traumatic brain injury, I have short-term memory loss, so therefore the dreams don't stick with my brain that long. But the flashbacks, I really don't have like visual flashbacks or sight, smell, hearing flashbacks. It's more mental flashbacks, like when some if I tell someone not to do something. They do it away, and they get do it do it anyway. And they get hurt or get a ticket or something bad comes about it. I flip out because that's small mistakes get people killed. Dumb mistakes get people killed. And then I've had not a flashback when there's a couple of people thinking it's funny to light a firecracker and scare everybody because no one's noticing it. And then after they do that, I'll look at them and they got that that little grin on their face, I think it's hilarious, and I flipped out and tried to kill everybody and break everything in my way because it's just more of an, they just don't know. They will never ever have to be in them shoes where they got bullets whizzing by their head or they got people shooting out of an alley at them not knowing where it's coming from or random bombs going off, but normal, a lot of civilians out there just think it's hilarious to joke around about, especially knowing they have someone who just got blown up right in the crowd with them and they're going to still do that and think it's funny. Yeah. Unfortunately, they never know. And, you know, yeah. never I'm glad they don't, them. but damn, does it hurt, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you ever get emotionally numb? 
yes, I've my bait my life is pretty much all emotional numbness. Everybody looks like I'm being heartless because I can't just find myself to break down and get depressed or get super excited about something. It just kind of goes in my brain and spins around and leaves. It's like, oh, that's cool. Or when people die or friends die or bad things happen, it's like I can't feel bad and I don't like it because then everybody thinks I'm just a heartless fool and don't care for anything in the world. It's just me reacting. As you said earlier, it's like I'm just me reacting from the bad thing that's happened before. It's just all going to be coming out with me now. Right. Can you give me an example of your hypervigilance? Hypervigilance, more, it's anywhere I go, any bar, any restaurant, any big crowd. I stare at everybody. Well, I, I glance at everybody. I look for vibe. I look for signs. I look for anything by the way they look at me or the way they're looking around, the way they're acting. If they're on the more confrontational look or if they're just people watching or anything. So if something does happen, I'll know the first person to go to. Or if I go to a restaurant, I always play fight with my friends or whoever I'm going to the restaurant with where I am not going to have my back to the door where I can't see new people coming in or where there's more people behind me. I will always have my eye out on everything. And, of course, I always look at possible catastrophes happening. We got exit here, we got exit here, we got windows here, we got windows here, and possible escape routes and stuff. So it's always kind of the whole complacency kills. Go to a place, not expect something to happen, or what if it does happen, you're screwed. So I'm always I'm preparing for it just in case it does happen. Are you easily startled at all? Loud noises? Anything? I mean, it's I've, I've got that, usually it's fight or flight reaction, kind of like haunted houses. Last year was my first haunted house that I ever went to since 2006 when I hit that roadside bomb. And it surprised me because I had no reaction except when everybody around me got scared like crazy and ran and screamed. I died laughing, but nothing could startle me. Nothing came out scared me. Nothing came out and made me throw my hands up and want to fight. It was just kind of looked at it and was like, oh, that was dumb or that wasn't that scary or I, nothing really bothered me. And which is a good thing for me, I think, instead of getting scared and then killing the person that jumped out and scared me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's weird how the, that reaction is a little bit awkward with me with mm. I try not to react. Or we have property in Southern Ohio, and there was a murder case down a couple of properties over from us, and we were driving by there, and I was going in the PTSD mindset knowing there's a bunch of people out here killing people and they're, they're all under investigation right now for the murder. And as we're driving by, people are sighting their guns in right next to where we were at. And right when we got beside them, they, it sounded like they were in the bushes with the gun by my head shooting at me. Well, my girlfriend flipped out in the back of the four-wheeler and holding on to me tight. And, of course, I glanced real quick, didn't see nothing, let it go, and I walked away and or drove away. And didn't react on it. And I was afraid that if something like that happened back in the past, looking forward now, I would uh, hit the tr hit the closest tree at the four-wheeler, jumped off, and low crawl through the woods to find where they're shooting and probably shot them. But, yeah, it didn't, it didn't affect me one bit. Ever feel hopeless or guilty? Hopeless, yes. Because back, being, back as a little kid, I've always grown up as the Marine or military being my dream. I wanted to do 20 or more, and I wanted to get out. Military was my life. That's all I talked about. It's all I wanted to do. It's all I did my school projects on. And then, of course, I hit the roadside bomb. Being a year and four months into the Marines, I was retired at three, four, three years, four months, and they said that my military career is over. And that was the big heart-shattering news I could have ever gotten. And then on my recovery stage, learned to walk again. I got into mixed martial arts, and that became my new dream. That became my new passion in my life. And then my MMA gym closed down and with me training there for being a trainer for three years, and then that dream shattered. So then I got into bodybuilding and personal training and bouncing and security at places, which you can only go so far with dreams and hopes and whatnot from that. 
And then the Cleveland Indians wanted me to throw a ceremonial opening pitch for them because I had a motivational story. Well, then I was expecting maybe some the right person's going to get word of it and then might take me somewhere. Well, of course, that didn't really go nowhere, but that wasn't really too big of a dream to shatter. And then right after, shortly after the ceremonial opening pitch in 2012, I ran into a buddy I went to the career center with, which he is now a firefighter. When we haven't talked for years, and then he brought me into his fire station, showed me the truck, showed me the ladder, showed me the hoses, and told me some stories from fires and stuff they had to fight. And it became, that's what I wanted to do. Start researching YouTube videos and anything I can, and then seeing fire trucks flying down the road, going to a fire car or something. So I guess this is my new dream. So I looked up the closest college, closest time, went to the fire academy, and I was all about it. That was, that was going to replace the Marine Corps dream. Well, then, since I'm 100% disabled, not social security disability, nobody really wants to hire me. And I even had a, a volunteer. I even had an interview with the volunteer department, and they didn't even call me back, which they said they were going to, to tell me that I either had the job or didn't, but they didn't even call me back. So that dream shattered my face, and my hopelessness comes from not belonging in society. Society just refuses to let me in. Or society will never accept me anywhere. So then, finally, my last hope is this book that I was that just got published because I'm making an imprint in the earth right now with this book. I feel, and this is my last my last hope. God forbid if it goes through or not, but yeah, it's I just can't be accepted by people, friends, family, relationships. It's just hard to hold anything close. It's hard to dedicate my life to something because a little bit of stress. It's like all right, see you later, and they can't handle it. Have you ever engaged in self-destructive behavior? Self-destructive, you know, physical harm, I'm kind of, like, uh, careless. Like, I'll do crazy stuff on the four-wheeler, or I'll do, I'll see a bunch of people fighting, i will like, watch this, I'll go scare everybody. So I'll go jump up, start pushing people around, breaking up fights, like, I don't care to have pain brought at, brought at me because I just, I'm careless. If I go into something, a situation, and I get shot and killed, so be it. It's, I'm careless. I really don't care what happens. Mm. And that's more of a, the hopelessness feeling where, well, it's probably better off if I'm not here anyways because no one's going to ever accept me to begin with. And then alcohol. I, when I first got medically retired from the Marines, I kind of found myself at a bar every day, every, all night, eating fast food, every meal. I just didn't care for life, and I was letting alcohol run me down. And a nasty diet, and that's where mixed martial arts finally came in and turned my life 180 degrees around and started fixing me. Excellent. All right. How do your symptoms affect those around you? Family, relationships, etc. Yes, family can't stay close to me. I, of course, are always going to be there. I love my family to death. They love me to death, but they can only handle me for a day or two straight without taking a break from me. So family kind of avoids having more of a couple of day vacation together or being around me for too long. I don't have any super close friends that are over every day or ever always hanging out with me. I got a wide variety of acquaintances, which I call normal friends and there's close friends, best friends, but I don't really don't have any close friends, best friends because anger and aggression with moral values and integrity. And that's only so much I can do in relationships. Of course, you can see it being doing a damper on, relationships because that's not exactly how you're supposed to act in a relationship. It's like a drill instructor 24-7 where if we get a little pissy argument or something, it's straight rage and aggression to win the argument or get them to go my way or something like that. And it's hard for me to hold a relationship as well with a girlfriend, yet alone friends and family and I find myself alone a lot it's quite often. What do you personally think will help solve most of the issues around PTSD? Coping strategies. Like me, I'd use humor, use my dog, I use my interests and likes, things that take my mind away from stresses of life or society. Me dealing with society is a horrible war. Like I just can't go out in public and see these people mouthing off to restaurant uh, waitresses and whatnot. When I see them getting mouthy and abusing their privilege, I start steaming so bad. And luckily, I'm always with 
someone out to eat if I go out to eat and they start talking me down so I don't flip out and run my mouth and then them get defensive out of normal human body nature, people are going to get defensive and mouth off back. Well, someone mouths off to me, that's pretty much calling me out, throwing their hands up, and they're going to end up walking out with a few broken bones. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's all about coping strategies. If you were to take the PTSD out of your life, if you could, would it make that big a difference to you? Yes. Well, my little sister, she's been asked by a few people how I've changed since the Marine Corps till now, or before the Marine Corps till after everything, and she'll start crying because I was the most laid back, respectful, quiet, polite person that was impossible to make mad, and now I'm this loose cannon, don't give a crap if I make someone mad, or if they make me mad, I want to make them twice as mad, or I'm, I'm just way different than I was before. I'm loud. I'm the life of the party. I'm the one sticking out because I just want people to know who I am, what I've went through. So therefore, they don't step on my toes at all with any other lack of morals, respect and values and courtesy and whatnot. What's the biggest, most difficult thing to deal with? Society, people, and actually <laughs> keeping my mouth shut and letting things go. <laughs> Um, it's, I can't do that. I don't know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> so I, I see people messing up all the time. My way, my way of life is Marine Corps life. Everything is one way. Everybody got to live the same way. There's right, they're wrong. Everything's the same for people. Well, I got six people on my road here, and they all got different lifestyles as well. Well, I don't exactly agree with anybody else's because that's not the Marine Corps way. So dealing with people's rights and wrongs, likes and dislikes – is real hard because I don't agree with it. If I don't agree with it, then it's not going to be around me at all. And then, of course, society, that's probably the biggest thing, is my sense of belonging. My sense of belonging has been gone for 10 years now, and I still can't find my place, in which I'm hoping this book brings me somewhere. And, but yeah, that's, that's probably the two biggest thing is society and people. Society and belonging in society. Oh, right, right. Tell us how you've been successful at dealing with your PTSD. The successful is I've helped a lot of people because I take my coping strategies and like, and I'll explain what this book has inspired so many people and changed so many lives already. And then my dog and the four wheeling and going out and having fun and just traveling and all that stuff. That is what keeps me at ease with my anger and aggression when I'm having fun or I'm doing something I like. So then I'll turn the facts around to where I'll get to know the person I'm talking to. I'm like, what do you like to do? You like to play video games. All right, well, I'll go find a video game that you get lost in mentally. And before you know it, you're going to realize I, I'm numb to the world when I'm playing my video games. So I suggest coping strategies for them based on their values of what they like and whatnot.